everybody knows what the lunge is in the world of fitness. We like to call them split squats when we're actually not lunging back, but instead just maintaining a position where the legs are split and fixed. In other words, the exercise looks like this. See, I'm just going up and down. I'm not actually lunging my leg back. And then we call it a split squat as opposed to a lunge. Notice that my hands are behind my head. That keeps me upright. Now watch, as I go down, see how the knee doesn't cave in? That's because this glute is actually doing its work. Whenever you see somebody demonstrating a lunge and, and you see the knee doing this, they got a uh, drunken sailor leg that they gotta watch out for. So, knee comes out just a little bit because my gluteus medius, side of my butt, is helping that stay nice and stable. Show you what it looks like on the other side. This is the basic split squat. I mean, this is a mobility exercise. For some people, it's a strength exercise because it's hard. You know, you can only maintain a couple of these with good form. For some people, you shouldn't be doing them at all if you're caving in like that. We'll talk about that. Now, if this is a mobility exercise for you, and your knee's caving in, what do you do? Just rock back and forth for now. We'll keep working on your glute exercises and eventually we'll get that lunge pattern fixed. But how do we progress this into a strength exercise? Let's say you need to add resistance. For some people, body weight's not enough. What do you do? You add a kettlebell. How do you add the kettlebell? Back into what's known as the rack position for the kettlebell. This is a great place to put a kettlebell because it's going to force the core, your abs, to do work. It keeps you upright. You can't be bent over while you're doing these because your abs are having to contract to keep you nice and upright. You don't have a choice. Let's do the other side. Split squat. Now what do I do if I want to make it harder? I can get a little wider, but my form starts to break down, and I start, you see that? Glute kicked in this way. No good. So I'm going to assume less of a split stance, one that I can demonstrate good form on. There's no benefit to me doing better than that. And what did I just work? I stretched the hip flexors, I worked the abs, I taught my thoracic spine to keep myself nice and upright. As long as I remember to keep my chin tucked, I'm keeping my chin nice and upright, I'm working my glutes, I'm working my adductors, I'm working my quads. Great. How do I make it harder? Now we're going to get fancy. The rear foot elevated split squat. It's a split squat with the rear foot elevated. What's it look like without any extra resistance? I'm going to do a split squat, except the back leg goes here. Now, a great place to start is find that place where you can get a stretch in that hip flexor. I'll show you what it looks like from this side. If you feel a stretch in your quad up at the, towards the top, right below the hip, known as the rectus femoris, if you feel a stretch there, you found the right place, right position to where this leg should be. You know, as in not far forward, more, not less. So once you can do that, you get up into that position, hands overhead, and you do split squats from this position. How do you make it harder? You can hold dumbbells. Right here. Great exercise for the entire lower body. And how do we make it harder than that? The higher up the weight, as in not at your sides, but more elevated, the harder it is on the core. Same position. 
Now I have to engage the core to keep myself upright. And I remember to chuck, tuck my chin. And I get all sorts of good stuff in one shot. Fantastic bang for your buck exercise that you can do at home using a stool, kettlebell, it could be just a dumbbell.